Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. We're in for a treat today. I don't think we're going to be able to repair this reel, but I did want to show this reel to you. It's fascinating. I uh, just worked on the first of two that uh, Gerard sent me. They belong to his father. They're the Finor 7 Out. It says Finor since 1933. And uh, beautiful old reel. It uh, kind of has an interesting lever drag system on it versus the uh, the more modern ones of today. This has an arm. We'll show you on the inside how this thing is working, but it's uh, it's got an arm mounted up top here, and it's got a little interaction inside. Uh, most of the lever drag reels you see today will have a throw that's uh, working on a um, a preset lever attached to the spool. This one is a little bit different. And uh, it's always fun to learn how the designs have changed over time. Uh, this is a bigger reel. And the problem that we're having with this reel is that the drag does not hold when you're all the way full on out. You can still pull it and pull it relatively easy. Now the reason I say that it probably will not be uh, something that can be repaired is that uh, my experiences on the first one that we had was that it's a cork drag. The cork has become dried and compressed and burnished. It's uh, just slipping there. And as far as I'm aware, there are no replacement parts for that uh, that reel. So um, we're going to do our best to kind of remove some of that burnishing and uh, we'll see if it improves the performance at all. But let's get started. So we get started with a couple of things. We, <clears throat> we get started with uh, showing you that I do wear a protective glove on my hand to keep the pieces and the dirt and the grime off. I do use a parts tray to put all those pieces and parts so that I know where they are when I go to uh, reinstall the wheel. And I also like to take a moment while I'm taking off the exterior pieces to thank our first responders and essential personnel and everybody who's working to keep us safe during this pandemic. We really do appreciate your dedication day in and day out, whether it's trying to keep us safe from the disease or in healing us if uh, we've contact, uh, contracted uh, the, uh, the COVID virus. So thank you. And thank you to everybody who's involved in the vaccine distribution and as well as the local hometown heroes and uh, the EMTs and local medical practice folks and uh, everybody that's kind of uh, involved here. You're going to notice there's a couple of really different uh, designs here, uh, and it's kind of fun. You can also notice that this is a victim of UV rays, so this has been around a long time. And I'm not sure even when this reel was made. I would guess the 1950s, but I'm not sure. There's a little uh, rubber um, washer that uh, kind of is a cushion between the handle and that gear. And uh, the first thing you're going to notice up here is that it's got an interesting kind of a lever for that lever design. This is running fine in free, free spool. And when you go over to the other side, as we mentioned, in full tight down, you can still pull the uh, pull the line out, which is uh, a sign that uh, it's not working uh, or the drag's not holding. And then on the top here on this thing, it's got a, a kind of a screw thing. And I'll show you when we get inside uh, how that screw is interacting with advancing the uh, the lever capacity uh, for that reel. All right. First up, then, I learned uh, from the other one that there's some things you take off and some things that you don't. And uh, one of the things that you don't take off is this particular drive here. Uh, you could take it off by removing this screw and then uh, pulling that off, separating it from the uh, the back ring here, but you don't have to. <clears throat> and actually, there's a little ball burring and a spring that's loaded onto this arm here. That's what's making the clicks inside these holes here. And if you do decide to separate them, uh, that little burring and spring are going to fly. So, like I recommend with a lot of things, take pictures as you start your project. And... Um, Try to get a schematic. Now, I went out on the web and I tried a couple of different sites. I found one that's close. It's called the uh, Big Game Trolling Reel, the 90FNA. It's not exact. So, uh, it kind of gave me a little bit of a look into what to expect. But uh, it's not this reel. But at least it kind of prepped me a little bit about how Finor was thinking of designing these reels. And uh, what, uh, what it may be. There's... <clears throat> Two short screws and a long screw. The long screw came from the middle. And notice on the back end of the middle, there is a little 
kind of a spacer here that that long screw goes through if you've uh, opened it up and you've tried to wonder what that thing is. And I like to just kind of put that spacer right back onto the long screw. That way when I go to look for it later I know exactly where it is. And then in my parts tray I've put those screws off to one side. That will enable me now to pull this assembly out. So there is a gear attached to the, the throw here. And you'll notice that there's a little stud on that gear. And that little stud is actually going to be advancing a preset on the uh, back side of this. And we'll show you that when we get around to it. The first reel was very dirty. I don't expect this to be any different. When I talked to Gerard, I called him up because I wanted to let him know that although I restored some of the function, I wasn't able to restore the entire function of the other reel due to the, the wear on the drag. And uh, he had mentioned that this, this was his dad's reel, reels, and uh, that the last time they were serviced, they were serviced by Finor. So you can imagine that that's been some time. Okay. You, learning what to, that you need to do and don't do. You don't need to take this off. This is your clicker. There are two screws up top here. And there's three screws below which become the screws for the side plate. Just the same thing. I'm going to put these into the parts tray. And again, I'm going to look for differences if there's any difference in the actual length of the screws. And if there is, I'm going to just note where the longer or the shorter screw came from. And then there's three screws below. One of them is here. One of them is hiding under here. Two of them are hiding under there. So this is a gear on the outside. We'll go ahead and take that plate off. So this is a good place to tell you to take pictures along the way. Now I'm taking the pictures with a video camera here. And don't think I don't go back and reference these things, particularly on reels that I haven't worked on, which was this before the last one. I can, I can, uh, I can say I've worked on this reel now because I just worked on the, the first one of his. That's where my lessons were learned. And that's why I'm passing along to you which ones need to be taken off and uh, which pieces can stay on the reel and uh, kind of what features and functions each have. So there's a big gear and a little gear inside here. So all of the drive of this, it's a single speed reel, and all of the drive of this is happening right in this case here. Kind of an interesting design all around on a couple of uh, places of note. Okay, those four screws are the same. Again, I'm going to take those and put those into the, the corner. Then we can remove this case. That case pops the main gear out. And I think right now we just kind of have a stuck bearing there. And a lot of dirt. And three, and two, and one. We can pull that out. Somebody took the chance to, to mark this up as 4-0. I'm not sure what that means. But uh, there you go. And then this is uh, the show here. It says that it's been some time since this has been uh, lubricated and cleaned up. And there's a lot of old dirty grease in there. So I use a cotton swab to, to clean that stuff up. And a paper towel. And we'll go back and put fresh grease in here. And then I'm just going to spray down the, the burring here before we repack that. I'm going to use a penetrating oil here. Just kind of let that sit off to the side. So that's your main case. And put that in. This is your main gear. I'm just going to clean up all the old dirt here. And just note as you're doing this, check the teeth. This is a beautifully machined gear. There's no chips or cracks in that. 
Then I'm just going to go sit that right in the, uh, the main gear. Here's a opportunity to clean. But there's a screw and a pinion gear here. And I had a little trouble with this on the other one. And so let's just go back to where we were. There's two screws here now that we have access to. That are the case screws. We'll take those out. We'll put those with the other case screws that we took out earlier. And this is, I use a parts tray and I use different corners of the parts tray for different pieces. There's a lot of folks that uh, will do other things. They'll uh, lay them out on a bench on a paper towel in the order that they cook them out. That's, that's a good way to do it as well. Um, I just use the bottom of a plastic jug. Some folks prefer to um, use magnetic trays in that. A lot of times uh, I would say that's a, a little bit of an issue because the trays themselves are, uh, or the screws, if they're, they're stainless, uh, aren't going to matter much. We'll just uh, clean that little bit of grease off that, that purring back there. We'll get a good drink of oil. I'm using an aftermarket uh, fishing reel oil. It's called Relax. I'm just going to let that burn soak there. Uh, the other one that I did was really full of, of grease and junk. This one's clean case. This is the back end of it. And so I learned one of the things is this: the, these three screws aren't doing anything other than holding this click ratchet in. So when you go to remove this, you don't need to do that. What you do need to do is kind of hold that click ratchet so that you can remove the screw that's holding the pinion gear in. Okay, well it looks like I have to change my drivers. So with a little bit of effort you can get this done. Notice the location, notice the screw, and hopefully this pinion here will just kind of pull out. Yep, it pulled out there. Okay, so we're in good condition there. We've got a lot of old grease on the inside of the case here, so that'll be next up to clean. And I'm just using a penetrating oil to, uh, as a general degreaser, to get the old grease out. So this is this is the interesting preset adjuster versus some of the other ones that you may have seen if you work on reels. This one is running on the back of the case just like this one. You can kind of see it here. This is your preset adjuster. So on the back, back end of our lever here you'll notice that there's a stud. That stud is riding in a, in a cut here and as you can notice, that's not centered at all, right? That's not a circle, but it's very much a kind of a ramp. You can see how it'll move up. And on the back here, we have the three studs. And they're, they're a little bit worn, and I'm thinking that's as some part of the contribution of why this isn't working. Uh, but as you, as you move this, they're going to move out of their nesting spots in that side plate. And what they're going to do is they're going to pull the assembly, which you just saw us take off. It's going to pull that assembly with the screw and the pinion gear forward, this one, and that's going to put more tension onto that, uh, that dry wash. Very, very interesting. So it's going to sit like this when it goes back into assembly, and that's a good place to take a picture, just so you know where it is. It's also a good time to oil that, uh, that burring that belongs on the back. Okay, I'm going to set that aside with the other piece of the case. And uh, now we got to work on the pieces that belong uh, to the reel and to the drag system. So the first thing up here is that uh, this has got the teeth in it. If you notice this big gear, and you notice the teeth here, that's kind of what's holding this lever drag in position. And then there's a spot in the case here, right on that, uh, that piece here, which is going to tighten and loosen. You can see how it moves. That's going to tighten and loosen this in terms of, of pulling. Well, I, I learned on the last one that this is a counter uh, thread. It's reverse, if you will. So what you would normally tighten by going to the right is actually how it uh, loosens here. I'm going to go ahead and take that, uh, that off. Clean up the old grease and put that inside. 
Then we have the piece here. And this should pull off, it does. And this is the drive for that uh, lever to operate on. So again, lots of old greases in that. And there's a bearing in the middle of it, so again, we'll do the same thing. This is a sealed bearing, but we'll go put some oil on there and we'll let that kind of soak its way in. And then there's an adjuster ring uh, that belongs on the outside uh, between the bearings here. Okay, once you do that then, you can release the balance of the spool, which is going to be a spring and a drag washer. So here's the issue in all of this. It has uh, has an old bearing here that we'll clean up as well. Do the same thing with this one, flood it. Let it sit, we'll go do some cleaning on that. But here's your quirk, and you can tell it's compressed, and it's uh, it's pretty well worn down, and to the, the point where what I would call burnished. So I'm just gonna use uh, a little bit of an abrasive. I'm gonna use a steel wall, just like you would an old brake lining, basically. Just try to rough this up a little bit. Get the old grease out of there that's dried in there to the extent that you can. And uh, that should give that more grip on the face of the uh, uh, the pressure plate on the back where this is going to ride. So you won't be able to restore it. I have no idea where you might find any kind of a, an acceptable replacement for this. And I think, uh, and that's what I told the, uh, the owner of this reel. And this appears to be a glue holding that cork on. So I'm not gonna even mess with trying to take this off and and see what happens on the other side. To me, that looks like an adhesive. Looks like identical to the one that was on the other side, and I think that's probably what they did here. They probably glued that on. All right, you saw on the back side we have a pressure plate then. This has got a little bit of debris on it. You can see that, and that could be another reason why this is slipping. So we'll clean that up as best we can. You want to get uh, clean surfaces uh, for uh, best contact on this. I'm just going to use the paper towel to do that. And I, I've kind of refrained from using a uh, penetrating oil or anything on here. I don't need any more slip than I already got. So uh, we'll just kind of kind of take as much of this off as we can uh, by hand. And then here's your spring that's providing the kind of the in and out uh, leverage point. And there's a, there's a little bit of scarring on this shaft as well. It's nothing unusual. It's nothing that you wouldn't expect to see on a reel of this age. But uh, we can do what we can do. Okay, I think we, we pretty much have that now. And again, these are, these are sealed bearings, so there's nothing you can really do about these. I'll clean them up as best we can. The one side has got a seal on it. And I'm going to flood this with, uh, with the oil again. And we'll place that down. So that's it. This is your, your lever drag system, right? So this goes back in. up top we have that bearing that we've already flooded. This is the ridge that the clicker rides on. So when you want that click sound in your, in your drag, that's where that's coming from. And then we'll take our, our grease brush and just get a little bit of grease on the shaft here. There's a washer that comes next. And there's our pressure plate. We've got a second bearing here, so that's three big bearings here. There's another bearing on the main gear, so this is this is a pretty smooth operator. So just like we did with the other one, you want to check, you want to make sure that the teeth on this are not scarred in any way and that they're clean, which they are. Again, the teeth on this one is not driving the reel. These teeth are there for the drag adjuster, so just be aware of that. And. Uh, that's going to interface with the piece that we did on the, uh, the back end of this. That's going to hold that as we pull forward uh, in this reel. All right, so notice there's a slot in this. Always, the first time around it was kind of 
What is that slot's purpose? Well, that slot is going to anchor this. And there's a pin on the side plate here that that slot's going to run into. It's going to sit like that eventually. And, that, oops, and that's going to cause the in and the out of the, uh, the movement of, of the lever drag. So in order for this reel to be effective, it's got to pull this whole spool together so that that cork piece on the back end contacts with that pressure plate. And this is the kind of the setup there. Remember when we did this initially, we took it off in a clockwise manner. So now it's got to go back on in a counterclockwise manner. Just like that. All nice and cleaned and re-greased. And I've also learned from this one on the last time around that uh, in order to be successful with this, you need to mount this to the uh, to the spool first. I'm going to take this out because we have the pinion gears in the other bearing. This is the pinion gear, and that screw holds both together. So this is my number one peeve when it comes to servicing reels is line. It always gets stuck at inconvenient times and this would be one of those inconvenient times. So we want to take the plate that we have, match this stud to the hole in this uh, piece. And the best way for me to do it is kind of sighted visually. It's not an easy task. And it actually can be done in reverse, so why don't we do that? We can do it this way. Why don't I show you that? I think I just learned something. I'm always open for learning. I think we can mount it that way. Just like that. So what I did here was I looked for the slot in that, uh, that piece. Mounted it. Now let's try putting the spool back on. And if I did it, Kind of learned something. If I didn't, well, no harm, no foul, right? Always trying to experiment here. There you go. So we're we're properly seated there, and you can see the play in the uh, that uh, contact point that's going to be working on this. All right, we we managed to pop out the pinion gear, but that's not a problem. It needed to come out anyway. So the pinion gear needs to be checked just like the others. We want to grab some grease. And we're going to grease this up. And then this one gets screwed on. We took that screw off initially. This one gets screwed on and it's going to hold the shaft as the other main gear drives this. So let's go ahead and take that screw that belongs in here and get that on. That'll help a lot. Now we have one more bearing in the case down here. You can see that's going to anchor that main gear. So just like the others, we're going to want to make sure that we get some oil on that before we go much further. And let's go flood that as well. I oil my bearings. I don't uh, grease them. And the reason for that is I don't like the way that the greases tend to accumulate uh, debris. Over. Next we're going to install the, the uh, gear into the case, which I just did. Give it a spin. You can see how it's spinning nicely. Now this whole assembly has to mesh, mesh with the pinning gear. So let's get that set up properly. And just give it a a little bit of a run there just to make sure that it's moving and it's it's turning I can feel it turning that's what we need and now we can get the side plate screws that we put in that are going to connect these there's four screws I go to the corner of my bucket here sure I've got the right ones. So this is all about a process, step by step, being patient, 
just kind of rechecking and checking again your approach and making sure that you uh, clean everything up and uh, take notes along the way so that as you go to reinstall you don't uh, don't make a mistake of leaving something away or uh, not completing a process somehow. So uh, if you like this kind of thing, I'm going to ask you to subscribe. And if you do subscribe, please hit the notification buttons. That way you'll see what I'm posting. I post frequently. And uh, what I'm posting, if you have an interest in it, you'll, you'll be able to go ahead and watch and play along as we go ahead and do this. So right now I'm just kind of moving everything to make sure that it's working. So. Next up then is to take this and put this back onto the case. We can't put that drive mechanism in for the lever drag yet because we have this case screws behind it. So take your assembly. Hopefully you don't trap that line that's in there. You want to rotate backwards so that you can seat the spool. And then you need, from experience, you need to be able to turn this to mesh in so that you pull the case to the proper position. I uh, really do appreciate having learned on the last reel because uh, this would be pretty exciting if I didn't learn some of these little tricks along the way. So I got the mechanics down pretty good in terms of what I was going to expect there. I just didn't uh, didn't learn the sequence quite as good as I guess the folks that probably put them together the first time. And now we're in, you know, since this is my second reel, I've learned a lot more in terms of what you don't need to take off and uh, the hazards of taking something off. And I, I pointed out, I think initially when we had that discussion, I learned kind of the hard way that you don't take this assembly, take this piece off because there's a burring ball bearing and a spring hiding in there and that was fun but uh, you know if you're not learning what the heck all right like I just learned I just put that whole thing back on and I missed the case screw so we'll do this again let's put the case screw first got too busy here so if you like this kind of a video if you're liking and enjoying this video please hit the like on the uh, on the bottom of the video here. If you have a question on this video or any video in particular, uh, go ahead and leave that question. It doesn't have to be on this one. And uh, maybe I can help you out. Maybe you're working on a reel and you're stuck. Maybe you want to learn a little bit more about uh, the Finor company. Maybe you want to learn a little bit more about these deep sea lever drag reels. If, uh, if you have a, a different reel, but you're uh, having a problem with it from a repair standpoint, uh, I'll try and uh, try and answer your question. You may have a reel like this that I never worked on before, and I might not be able to tell you exactly what the issue is. But uh, if you send me some pictures uh, to my email, uh, I'll try my best to take a look at the pictures and see if I can't get you started in the right direction again. All right, so we uh, we're reworking here because we have a screw that's sitting in my parts tray here that's not uh, part of the deal goes right there and that's the, the value of a parts tray it shows you that there's something left over and uh, a buddy of mine sent me a little note the other day I thought it was pretty good he said the good mechanics know how to take things apart they're courageous in what they do and uh, they know where to hide the parts that are left over so hopefully that's not us but uh, I did kind of at least get a chuckle out of it all right we're going to do this again then just kind of line this up Mesh the teeth, seat this properly, put those pieces back in, simple as that. So if uh, practice makes perfect, the next time around I won't forget that case screw and get a, bit, a little bit closer to uh, perfection. And then finally, this is uh, Gerard's reel. Gerard brought me this reel to uh, have repaired. If you have a reel that... Uh, Maybe your needs are servicing, uh, but you're not up for doing it yourself. doesn't matter what kind of reel. I work on uh, all kinds. I work on spinning and conventional, lever drag, level wind, bait casters, you name it. I kind of get my hands involved in it. 
But if you're interested in uh, having me service your reel or maybe something's broken on it, you're interested in me repairing it, uh, just drop me a note on the business card that follows. Use my email address and uh, I'll be happy to respond to you giving you that repair information. All right, so we've got this all back together again except for that lever drag. We're just going to give that a turn to make sure everything's good there. We've got a little uh, rubber band kind of thing here that belongs with that. That goes next. Here's that uh, uh, the lever drag function. I already put grease on the other gear. This, quite honestly, this is holding it in place. There's not much grease involved in that. But uh, we're going to go ahead and just make sure that this seats. Now, you need to uh, you need to locate, and it's generally in close to the off position. You need to locate that stud, and you need to mesh that stud with the adjuster here. So, kind of an eyeball situation there. You'll know when it's in. There it is. It's in now. And it actually lines up pretty good. Uh, from experience, I found that you want the lever drag reels to be in the off position as you're installing the presets. And uh, that way you don't have any resistance in terms of the actual reel itself. And you, uh, you can work towards uh, easily put, more easily putting the case on because you don't have to compress any springs or anything that maybe is associated with the... Uh, the tension on the spool in the lever drag mode. All right, so there's the two short screws. We took that as a note. Um, they go on each side, and then we mentioned that there's a longer screw, and that the longer screw goes in the, the middle there, and it has that spacer associated with it. So, for some reason, this one's just not, uh, uh, it's rubbing up against the, the arm there. Uh, there we go. I just had a pen fierce in that was a pen pursuit in that was pretty interesting. It had a uh, it had a really awkward feel to it. It was like it was skipping. And when I opened up the case, it was actually a rub of the crosswind block against the uh, bracket. That's the first time I had seen that. Okay, this is a uh, a little spacer that has to go in next. Not necessarily easy to do. Those of you that have watched my channel know I have a little saying out there that says real repair is about a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of courage, and a good sense of humor. Because there's going to be times like what happened with the first edition of this reel where you're just going to uh, drop a ball bearing or something because you didn't realize it was there and you're just going to have to have the ability to laugh at it and learn from it. All right, there's that last one. We'll tighten that down. I'll show you the spacer in the back that we just did. Then we're just about getting to the point where it's worth a test drive. So I, I'm hoping that the burnishing of that cork is going to help a little bit. I'm somewhat concerned that there's wear on those studs on the back of the, uh, the preset adjuster here. And uh, I'm up for the challenge to see what's going on. All right, we've installed that little rubber band. The handle is next. And the cap goes on. I just need my wrench here. It's helpful to have a lot of different tools on your bench as you do this. I notice there's a um, little Allen key set here it didn't seem to be holding it back but I guess if you want to hold that nut down you can use your Allen key I don't have that tool on my bench at the moment I'll go get it later to, uh, to further lock that down okay so we're in the neutral position we should be able to spin I know for one thing that the the bearings with all the oil on it this is in the cleanup that's spinning a whole lot better and now you want to test to see where you are in the throw so right now, I think that we probably need a lot of adjustment on this. We do. So if, you, if you're going to adjust the lever drag, it's always recommended that you do it in free spool. This is a little advanced mechanism. That little ratchet on the inside is going to engage with the teeth on the other one. And you want to uh, turn that to see if you can't tighten it up a little bit, give yourself some more adjustment. All right, let's go to the half point. Let's go to the full. 
we're not there yet. Okay, so the final test now. So this is one I actually had to walk away from. That's why the gloves are off and that. I wasn't getting the sensitivity in the, uh, in the spooling that I would have liked. And what I did was I, I, I just stopped and tried to think mechanically what was going on here. This little adjuster is just that. It's a little adjuster. It creeps and crawls along. It's not a very uh, fast moving uh, adjustment to the spool. And so what I did was I took the face of the reel off again. I went back into the, uh, the dial where it's going to adjust and I manually adjusted it until I got it correct. So sometimes you just have to say, let me go back and relook this thing and see if it works. But now it does. Look at this. We have free spool at the first strike position. Uh, I should give myself some more line here. First strike position, we can pull line out. And when we're in full strike, well, I don't have enough strength to do it. So we're going to call this one a success. We're going to call this one a learning experience and say thank you to Gerard for letting me have the opportunity to work on this reel. It's been fun, and now he's got a reel that's been restored where uh, a couple of bait and tackle shops told him they either don't work on it or it's impossible to restore because of that quirk, uh, quirk washer. So in this case, it was just a... I think at the end of the day, besides dirt and grease and the burnishing on the cork, it was that it was pretty badly out of a line and this adjuster just uh, would take a day and a, and a half to uh, keep turning it, maybe to bring it into the adjustment that was needed. So I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, uh, please like it. Again, I would ask you to subscribe. And uh, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, please leave them in the comment section. And finally, if you have a reel that needs to be repaired, uh, I do repair that by mail, and uh, if you leave me a message, uh, send me an email uh, on the business card that follows, I'll be happy to go ahead and uh, give you that repair information. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, wishing you a great day.